Hey everybody, this is Dr. Maples. We're going to keep going with our socialization lectures. Now we're going to talk about something called Goffman's dramaturgical pro approach. Now the dramaturgical approach simply is the idea that our entire lives are lived uh, basically as a stage production. We are actors playing out parts. Now at first that seems a little silly, right? Because obviously we're not getting paid to be actors and playing out these roles. What do they really mean by that? Well, let's go back to the very start of our socialization lecture. Do you remember when I asked you to think about how you might define yourself? And maybe some of you picked roles like professor or your job description, or even like a family member, like you're a sibling or a child um, or you know even a parent. Well, this is actually kind of getting into what Goffman was getting after. So with this idea, we're all playing certain parts. For example, in Goffman's eyes, I would right now be playing the role of professor. My role is to talk about my expertise in a subject, to share that information with you so that you can learn. What other things are expected to me as a professor? Well, I'm expected to uh, do great research that's valuable to the community. Uh, I'm expected to serve the university. I'm expected to give you grades on assignments. I'd love to just give you all A's, but I can't do that, right? I've gotta make sure and set up assignments that measure your knowledge. And then I have to give you a grade on that. And at the end of the semester, I give you a letter grade that confirms um, a number score that I found that shows how well you did in the class. That's my job. What's your role as a student? Well, your role is to listen to the lectures, read the textbook as assigned, make sure you complete your quizzes on time, make sure that you complete any assignments, um, make sure and watch the lectures. If I didn't already mention that, you can watch them twice, in fact. With this, we're all playing a role. Let's uh, think about this when we're buying a cheeseburger at a fast food restaurant. So, um, ooh, let's go to Lee's Chicken. I really love chicken. All right, so we're at Lee's Chicken, and one of us gets to play the role of customer, and the other gets to play the role of clerk at the register. I'll be the customer. So I walk in and I say, yes, I would like a number eight, please. And uh, I would like to also have uh, unsweet iced tea, please, because it's amazing. And I don't need a biscuit. And for sides, I would like um, the green beans and the potato wedges. And I'd also like to get one of those really amazing um, honey um, sauce things that you have, the honey mustard sauces. So I, I've ordered there at least a few dozen. <laughs> hundred times and uh, you know that's what I do as a customer right I say all these phrases and then what does the person behind the desk say they're like okay well that'll be seven something um, and I say okay and I give them my credit card and they run my credit card and everything just works out right everything works out because everybody knows what parts they're playing that clerk knows how to be a clerk I know how to be a customer we've done this role dozens of times what if it's a new clerk? Maybe they're learning to be a clerk. So now they're playing the role of a new clerk. And they might say, hey, this is like my first time. So um, thanks for being patient with me. And I'll be like, oh, no problem, which makes me now the role of the supportive customer. What if I'm the angry customer? Rrr, you rrr, rrr, rrr. Then we're all playing different roles. But the point is, is throughout all of this, we're playing specific roles. I play the role of a father, of uh, a partner, of a parent, uh, or a mission father, of a professor, of a metal detectorist, of a climbing researcher, of an expert. These are all the things that I do, but I'm always just playing a role. I'm doing something that's expected of me. And likewise, people will have certain expectations about that role. Now, it's interesting because when we think about that, well, it, it is, it's kind of uncomfortable, but after a moment you're like, well, I don't know, that kind of works because so much of our lives are lived on autopilot. Remember that definition of the situation in a previous lecture? Yeah, here it is. So, so much of what we do, we're just fulfilling roles for other people who are playing parts in their lives. Now we do actually prepare for these roles. For example, we can always think of the front stage as the place where we're doing our performance. Now, if we were in a physical classroom right now, I would say that our classroom is in fact the front stage. I stand at the front of the class with the board behind me and I talk and I write and I gesticulate and I point at the PowerPoint slides and things like that. And that's kind of where I perform. And you would actually be performing too. You'd be sitting in your desks performing the role of the student. It's a little weird now that we're doing online classes. You know, exactly where does that front stage fall? Well, the backstage can be a little clearer an idea, maybe help us out. Now, the backstage is where we might prepare for our roles. So, for example, before I go to class, I'll often swing by and go to the bathroom. 
Um, might check that I don't have broccoli between my teeth. Uh, maybe brush my beard a little bit if it's looking crazy. Um, and I just like to make sure that I'm ready. Even in my office, I'll sit before five, 10 minutes before my class and just kind of refresh myself about what I'm gonna talk about that day. And so I'm preparing. Those places are what we call a backstage. These are places where we get ready for our roles. Earlier in the day, I would also be in the bathroom, brushing my teeth, combing my hair, and so forth. Um, and those are, again, places where we prepare for our roles. Whereas the front stage is where we perform. Like I said, in the classroom, it would be our physical classroom at uh, the Lee's Chicken. Um, it would be standing right there at the register. That's our place where we're performing. The front stage is kind of like the place where all the action is happening. Backstage is behind the curtain. People don't see what happens back there. And that's an area where you don't have to necessarily be yourself. When I'm brushing my teeth in the morning, I don't have to be a professor. I don't have to be a dad. I don't really have to be anything. I just am a person brushing my teeth, and that's all there is to it. I'm just preparing for my role. One other thing to consider too is that in doing this, we're often preparing what we call a personal front. Now this may sound just a little bit like Cooley's looking glass self, and it should because it's really similar in terms of ideas. The idea of a personal front is that I can manipulate how I appear to maybe try and change how you might react to me, but also to make sure I'm ready for my role. Let's pretend that I'm a nurse or a physician. Um, I might put on a lab coat in the morning and scrubs to make sure people understand that I'm fulfilling my role. I might put the stethoscope around my neck so people say, oh, they're in medicine. They're going to fulfill a specific role. Similarly, a police officer or a fire person, they're going to put on a specific uniform to let people know I'm a police officer. I'm a fire person. For a professor, I could put on my fancy robes, which I wish we got to teach in our fancy robes. They're really cool. And, you know, you pay a lot for them, so you want to wear them as many times as you can. Nonetheless, um, I could wear my fancy robe. I could wear a shirt and tie. Then again, once you're tenured, maybe you wear blue jeans and a t-shirt. Maybe that's just who you are as a professor. I fall somewhere in between there. And even when I wear a tie, you can't see it because my beard covers it. So is what is. Anyways, we can always manipulate how others see us. Think about this in the same way that Brad Pitt might prepare for a role. He might think about what voice he's going to use or how he's going to present his character. He's preparing in the backstage. And then when he's ready to perform in front of the camera, he's on the front stage. It's no different for us in our society. All the time, we're preparing ourselves for roles that we're going to play time and time and time again. Sometimes roles that we'll only play once. Nonetheless, it's an exciting take on all these cool social norms happening around us that shape our experiences. We're going to wrap it up there in our last, not our last lecture, our next lecture and our last example of social theories. We're going to talk again about W.I. Thomas and his idea of the Thomas theorem. So we'll learn more about that in our next lecture. If you have questions about any of this, if you need anything, you know where to find me. Take care and we'll talk soon. See ya.